Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to ETAP20. ETAP20 is a fusion of months of research, development and testing and decades of engineering experience. The webinar today will cover major features and capabilities in ETAP20. This release makes massive advances in data management, efficiency, flexibility, interoperability, asset modeling, and network analysis applications to enhance the design, operation, and automation of electrical systems across all industries. This new release includes time-saving electrical safety capabilities, advanced renewable energy modeling and simulation tools, leading edge co-simulation technology, scripting and program automation interfaces, and model-driven real-time network management solutions, plus hundreds of enhancements and improvements that are automatically added to the existing ETAP modules. Given the brief time for this webinar, we will discuss and demonstrate some of the significant capabilities. A number of these features and capabilities will be covered in further details in their individual upcoming webinars. ETAP20 release is built upon a unified digital twin platform and offers an impressive set of innovation solutions from design, operation, to automation. Digital twin models and workflows have evolved to become increasingly important in power systems, short-term asset, and network-wide optimization applications. However, digital twin characteristics must go beyond the connectivity platform between data collection, digital workflows, and visualization systems. ETAP20 provides the orchestration between an automated rule-based design tool, model-driven predictive analysis, co-simulation platform, training simulation hub, combined with real-time analytics and intelligent controls. ETAP20 also provides a necessary foundation that transforms information into actionable decisions. Harnessing the power of ETAP's ecosystem throughout the digital transformation process will help engineers, operators, and managers increase their awareness and understanding of systems in a cost-effective and repeatable environment. So let's take a look at some of the new products and solutions across design, operation, and automation. The first category of products and solutions ensure safety and maintain compliance. Auto Evaluation Arc Flash or Automated Arc Flash Evaluation is a new solution to quickly evaluate Arc Flash Instant Energy with time-saving features that are used during protection and coordination study to significantly reduce costly modifications and mitigation equipment. DC arc flash now includes a new energy subtraction method that provides high accuracy arc flash analysis to calculate the instant energy for direct current or DC applications. Ground grid now includes a brand new graphical result visualization that provides 2D contour and 3D surface charts. The new products and solutions in ETAP20 also provide design flexibility and high fidelity simulation. The enabler for these is PlotView. PlotView is a brand new capability that allows for live plots and graphical result visualization throughout the ETAP complex. You can get live insight of the study results using plot view, including customized visualization and export capabilities. Adding to the design flexibility is ETAP PY or Python scripting and study automation using Python scripting language. This includes a feature rich ETAP Python API editor for creating and executing Python scripts. The high fidelity simulation 
is now possible through electromagnetic transients. ETAP20 now offers a dedicated EMTP software for analysis of power system transients. You can use the software to also co-simulate electromagnetic and phasor transients. Therefore, the accuracy and detailed multi-domain phasor and electromagnetic transient studies can be performed between ETAP EMTP software and ETAP transient stability software. The new products and solutions in the renewable energy integration and grid compliance space include battery energy management, such as lead acid and lithium ion battery charging, discharging, battery management systems that can be used for renewables, microgrids, railways, and other applications. Related to this is battery model parameter estimation that allows users to estimate battery charge and discharge parameters. You can identify these charging and discharging parameters, verify the maximum capability of the battery, validate its performance, and select the most appropriate battery bank for your application. In order to meet grid code compliance, you need to have dynamic models for wind, energy storage, and more. ETA 20 includes brand new renewable energy and battery storage dynamic models through user-defined dynamic model interface, or UDM, as well as the ability to connect and simulate manufacturer black box models via manufacturer DLLs, or dynamic link libraries. We have also enhanced ETAP UDM, or user-defined dynamic model interface itself. This includes an intermediate state visualization through a scope view, as well as the ability to output the result of UDM and transient stability into a graphical comparison tool. This allows our users to not only compare results against a benchmark, such as the measurements from the electrical system, but also validate the network performance for operational grid code compliance. ETAP20 also includes the ability to ensure compliance with trusted calculations, such as fast and accurate sizing and protection evaluation per French standard NFC13-200 for high voltage power cables. ETRAX is a solution for AC and DC railway systems which has been further enhanced to improve the reliability of new and existing rail traction power systems from conceptual design to network planning and expansion through the introduction of wayside energy storage in the traction power simulation. The ETAP interface itself has been enhanced as well, including the intelligent geospatial, schematic builders, and visualization tools. The Intelligent GIS Diagram or Geospatial Information System Diagram now offers new time-saving enhancements and graphical features to increase performance and improve overall application responsiveness. We've also enhanced our Graphical Network Diagram or OLV Single Line Diagram as well as multiple enhancements throughout the ETAP interface. The cloud and mobile offerings have also been enhanced to increase design speed and accuracy. NetPM, or Network Project Modeling and Management, now offers shortened project delivery time, improved design quality, and project efficiency improvements using GIS project collaboration, in addition to the single line diagram collaboration and project management. The ETAP app for mobile field data collection and synchronization has also been enhanced. The ETAP app version 4.0 now offers increased accessibility to ETAP projects for data collection, verification, and synchronization. Field engineers can now use ETAP app 4.0 to build one-line diagrams, enter information, and validate their power system network faster than ever before. Through data exchange, we've enhanced our existing conversion tools and provided brand new conversions from legacy software 
into ETAP power system design and operation solution. As we transition from design to cloud to operation solutions, we can take a look at some of the enhancements that are offered in ETAP with respect to unifying power system situational intelligence. ePROTECT, which is a centralized web-based protection and asset management solution, has been enhanced to offer change management for relay settings, managing asset location and information, and managing the protected device settings throughout the life cycle of relays and substation assets. Electrical OTS, or Operator Training Simulator, has been enhanced to improve and augment operator or dispatcher training through real-world learning and evaluating contingency response for steady state as well as dynamic scenarios. AFAS, or Advanced Fault Analysis System, now allows you to accurately determine the fault location and offers an integrated outage management system. Using the fault waveforms, we can accurately determine the location of the fault, pinpointed on the single line diagram or geospatial diagram, determine the optimal isolation steps, dispatch the crew, determine the estimated time to restore, and provide all of this information via desktop as well as mobile applications. ETAP20 also includes enhancements to its automation products such as mall driven design software and control hardware solutions. Microgrid controller and energy management system is a mall driven microgrid management and control system that includes an integrated, unique mall driven design software and control hardware combination to develop, simulate, optimize, validate, and control microgrids. Like the microgrid controller, the power plant controller or EPPC is also a model driven management and control system that allows renewable power plant owners and operators to visualize, predict, optimize, manage, and perform grid code compliance audits of their solar and wind farms. Now that we've looked at a summary of all the major features and capabilities in ETAP20, Let's take some of these cap major capabilities and go into a little bit more detail along with the ETAP software. First up is automated arc flash evaluation that allows you to boost productivity and save time. The maximum amount of time spent during any protect the maximum amount of time spent during any power system study is usually during the protection and coordination phases as well as the arc flash studies. Majority of the time is spent obviously to collect the settings for protection and coordination, but thereafter, it's the balancing act that must be done between the bolt default current and the arcing current. We are always trying to find an optimal setting for our protected devices that meets the uh, coordination adequacy and safety through bolt default current or zero impedance fault and offers the personnel safety and protection against arc energy release in case of an arc flash event. Automated arc flash evaluation allows you to balance and arrive at an optimal setting between these two varying uh, fault currents in an automated fashion using a concept of constant energy boundary area or C area. So let's take a look at how automated arc flash evaluation can be applied in ETAP 20. Uh, automated arc flash evaluation is built on top of the existing STAR automated evaluation program. You can simply select a single piece of equipment or multiple sections of the diagram to perform an automated evaluation. And in a, a very few steps, the program can automatically evaluate the protection and coordination of a single zone or multiple zones in your power system network. For this example, we can see that we have a violation in our protection or our bolt default coordination. However, we have passed our arc flash evaluation. So therefore, an optimal setting must be chosen that balances the short circuit based coordination as well as the arc flash based coordination. You can simply expand the mini TCC 
evaluate your protection settings, choose the optimal setting for each case and automatically evaluate. By disabling the instantaneous, the program automatically does a coordination evaluation, gives you an updated view, and we can see that my bolted fault coordination or short circuit coordination now passes. If I go to the arc flash page, now I can see that my arc flash incident energy is exceeding its critical limit. And therefore this becomes a balancing act that must be constantly iterated back and forth. This is where the C area becomes handy. If we zoom into this particular section, we can see our protected device trip characteristic along with the C area damage curve lines. These lines are based upon all the variations that can happen in the conductor orientation, bus gap, and other factors. And these factors can be defined for every piece of equipment along with the enclosure information. You can simply select the curve and adjust it such that the curve is uh, protecting the thermal damage and go back and check your evaluation. Here we can see that we have marginally exceeded the limit, which may be acceptable from a arc flash perspective, and we have a good balance with our coordination. So in one glance, you can see the effect of your settings on your bolted fault coordination, as well as the arcing fault coordination. Of course, the details of arc flash auto evaluation will be covered in an up upcoming webinar. Automated arc flash evaluation can therefore be used to perform risk analysis based on multiple operating conditions and current variation. It accounts for equipment isolation and overcurrent protective device tolerances, and can automatically evaluate the faults on the line side, bus side, as well as the load side of the protective devices. Automated arc flash evaluation also includes global filters for special conditions such as the new IEEE 1584-2018 2 kiloamp or 240 volt rule. Automated arc flash evaluation includes an arc flash evaluation rule book that you can configure and adjust such that you can use the criteria for evaluation on an individual equipment basis or on a global uh, basis for all the equipment in your electrical system. Marginal and critical evaluation alerts are automatically provided in the evaluation tables and you can automatically update the minimum and maximum short circuit or fault current that's being used to perform the arc flash evaluation. Next up is DC arc flash which we have enhanced to of course comply with NFPA 70E 2018 annexures by including a new method which is the incident energy subtraction method. Uh, DC arc flash also includes updates and enhancements to the DC arc flash calculator and you can update worst case results from the analyzer to the data block. The DC arc current reference plots can also be shown on the star views. So let's take a, a look at some of these uh, through the ETAP software. So in, in order to show some of these DC arc flash features, let's go ahead to our DC system in our standard example file. We're in our DC arc flash mode and we'll go ahead and run our studies. So we can see the instant energy and the fault clearing time or FCT has been computed uh, along with the total arcing current for DC bus number uh, three. Now this instant energy and the fault clearing time is based on the total DC arcing current on this bus and the fault clearing time of the worst case or the slowest fuse between these two sources. Therefore, it, in some cases, it can give you a result that is highly conservative as opposed to uh, one source clearing first and their surviving source clearing next. And that depends on the difference or the magnitude difference between the two fault currents. Now let's do our first step to go ahead and simply uh, turn on our uh, data block so we can see uh, the data block information. We can go into our analyzer which we can essentially uh, dock into our interface here uh, and we can go ahead and select the number of buses that we have in our system 
select the worst case uh, instant energy and simply update the, the data block. You can also click on uh, minimum, select the number of buses here, and again, simply update the, the data block in the system. So with, with this, you can uh, quickly go ahead and update uh, the worst case energy directly into the data block so you can print and visualize this information. And you can see that the source of this information is from the, the DC arc flash uh, analyzer. Uh, now let's go ahead and apply our energy subtraction method uh, where we can see if there is going to be a difference if DC fuse one clears first followed by DC fuse four uh, or it's going to be the same uh, results. So we'll go ahead and run our DC arc flash calculation again and you can see that now the instant energy changes from 3.6 over to 0 0.622 calories per centimeter square. So therefore, with our subtraction method, we can see that the DC fuse one clears first at a higher fall current and allows for certain uh, arcing energy to be let through. And DC fuse, which is slower to clear, has much smaller arcing energy because the fall current is lower. So when you, sub when you combine these two energies together, the total incident energy is actually quite less compared to looking at the uh, total fall current and the slowest clearing time. So therefore you must go ahead and apply the subtraction method uh, for DC arc flash where it makes sense to get a higher accuracy or more realistic uh, instant energy uh, calculation. For AC arc flash uh, energy, we have essentially added global and individual typical data for enclosures. The arc flash calculator has a number of enhancements and we've also added worst case pole or phase identification as part of the arc flash energy evaluation. Next is short circuit analyzer, which has a massive improvement on the way we analyze the study results and report them in a tabulated fashion. It now includes the ability to update the worst case duty results to the data block, which means you can compute all your short circuit cases, let the short circuit analyzer compute the worst case condition, apply to the data block and print your one line diagram. On that one line diagram, you can also update the worst case short circuit results and also include the equipment ratings for device duty against which you are comparing the short circuit results in the first place. So let's take a look at this feature through the ETAB software. So we're back to our example file where we can switch over to our short circuit mode. Uh, select our study case and the report that we would like to uh, execute, run our short circuit study. Uh, maybe we have some other configurations that we would like to analyze and apply to another report. Uh, and we can continue doing this uh, as part of all the scenarios that you would normally create as part of the short circuit study. Now, once these uh, scenarios have been um, performed, you can open up the short circuit analyzer, which gives you the ability to visualize and tabulate information from various reports, as we can see here. We've included the uh, device duty capability from various equipment, the short circuit current, as well as the ability for the program to give you the worst case short circuit current across different reports. You can easily see the short circuit from different reports or when you apply the worst case, you can see the worst case values and which report they are derived from. Once you have this information, simply update the data block by selecting the, uh, the uh, buses that you want to uh, update. Uh, select the component types that you would like to update and the update is completed. We can then simply go to our diagram select the appropriate uh, data block, activate it, and uh, evaluate the information that we are seeing uh, on the one line diagram. So you can see for this circuit breaker, the worst case result is coming from the analyzer from report number one and the associated information that you chose to be included in the data block. You're now ready to print your one line diagram once it has been set up and produce a high quality deliverable for your short circuit study.
For ground grid systems, we've added a new plot view visualization. You can also use Python-based scripting to produce visualization of the ground grid system. So let's take an example of both of these two versions, the plot view as well as a Python-based result visualization. So in, in order to uh, illustrate the ground grid uh, plot, we can just simply double click on the ground grid uh, program, select our output report, run our computation, and bring up our plot selection for, uh, let's say, touch and step potentials. And we can see the new plot view interface uh, gives us a nice, clear, clean picture of our 3D surface chart. Uh, we can simply close the charts we don't need. Uh, you can navigate through your mouse, zoom, pan, and perform all kinds of uh, actions on this particular chart. You can also right click to access our radial menu for this uh, ground grid chart and switch over from a 3D surface over to a 2D flat surface where you can again see the X, Y, and Z uh, coordinates and you know quickly evaluate where your danger points are in the substation ground grid. By changing the plot preferences, you can also allow ETAB to utilize built-in or provided Python scripts to export the ground grid data into uh, Python-based charting packages, uh, such as this one, and then visualize the same information in a uh, uh, browser-based rendering or any other renderer that's provided in the plotting package. Uh, in, in this case, we are plotting, again, the touch potential profile uh, in a 3D visualization, uh, or you can also do a 2D contour where you can again evaluate the X, Y, and Z uh, coordinates of your ground grid system. So ETAB basically provides you the ability to use the plot view, which is a, a brand new visualization for uh, 2D and 3D charting. And you can also use the built-in Python scripts to export the data and visualize it into a Python-based uh, visualization library. Now that we've seen what plot view does for ground grid systems, let's take a look at what plot view really is for, for ETAP as a whole. Plot view is an advanced framework for charting and graphing simulation results in ETAP 20. It includes the ability to have live charts overlaid with previous results. You can have embedded live charts on the one line diagram. It's integrated with all the major ETAP OLV modules. You can automatically size and adjust the chart layout and orientation. You can automatically fit the, the data to your, your plot canvas. And it includes all the standard uh, capabilities that you would come to expect from an advanced plotting package, such as tooltip and crosshair based value tracking, ability to export the data through Excel or clipboard or other means, user configurable plots and settings, user-defined application styles or themes, as well as other capabilities such as zooming, panning, docking, etc. So let's take a look at plot view in action in ETAP 20. We'll use the example of uh, short circuit, uh, especially the IEC 61363 uh, graphical result charting. So for that, we'll go, again go back to our standard example file, uh, switch over to the short circuit mode, and essentially uh, perform our IEC 61363 based uh, short circuit study. Once the study is finished, as usual, we can bring up our plot selection, select the bus that we want to chart, and the plot view essentially shows us all the information from the selected plot parameters. You can simply move the, the chart window and change your layout by dragging and dropping. You can go back to the plot selection, choose more than one equipment, to be charted. And the plot view essentially combines all the series together and as automatically assigns the colors for you. And you can zoom in, zoom out, uh, and navigate through and see all the information on the Y and X axes uh, accordingly. And then once you're done, you can just do a best fit and you're back to where you started. The views that you don't want, you can just simply close out and then just focus onto the, the chart that you have in mind. When you turn on the tracking or crosshair, it essentially allows you to track the values across multiple series uh, at the same time. And you can quickly find the magnitudes 
uh, across multiple uh, devices in one shot. If you select multiple uh, devices, you can also select the, the charts that you would like to uh, combine together, uh, which of course will give you the similar information as, as earlier, but you can also bring in multiple parameters to, to combine in, in addition to a single chart, and then the program automatically gives you multiple uh, y-axis uh, corresponding to the parameters you chose. So let's take a look at plot view through uh, another example, which is through um, transient stability. In transient stability, the plot view really comes alive. And that's not just a pun. In transient stability, the plot view is essentially a live view, giving you an insight into the simulation study and the results as the study is progressing. It of course has a huge advantage when you're performing st transient stability studies uh, repeatedly or multiple scenarios and you're doing a, a number of trial runs for example computing the critical fault clearing time and so on and so forth by having a live chart you don't have to wait till the study is finished if you do not like the result you see you can simply abort the study and start again with different settings so the live chart essentially will save you time and energy if applied correctly onto the the one line diagram as well as the uh, individual uh, plot view windows. So let's see the plot view, especially the live plot view in action in the transient stability mode. So in order to show the, the transient stability plot view in action, let's just switch over to our example file over to our transient stability mode and run this analysis and see some of the fantastic capabilities that plot view has to offer uh, when you're working with transient stability uh, module. So as soon as the, the study is completed, you can select the, the equipment that you would like to chart, uh, select the plot types, and essentially uh, activate the plot view to see the information uh, from the study results. And as usual, you can go to this uh, hairline and activate this to see individual information. You can actually also go to the, the, the hairline and you can put it into uh, various modes, uh, such as the uh, adding mode, which means that as soon as you click uh, on a particular location, you can drop a hairline and show a region or area of interest uh, using this uh, capability. Uh, of course, when you print this chart, all this information is printed along with it. Uh, in order to see what uh, Live View will do for us, let's click on Live and we'll just simply switch over to a completely uh, different uh, configuration of the system where this particular breaker is open. I'm in live view, and we essentially run our transient stability uh, calculation. And you can see that the previous uh, result is actually uh, kept, and uh, the live information is added to the chart as well. The previous information is this uh, lighter color, and the new information is in the darker color. So you can quickly uh, evaluate and see uh, in the live chart, not only what is happening during the study, but also what is the difference uh, from the previous run to this particular uh, run inside the, the, the program. Uh, we, can now take, we can now take this to the next step further, where we can simply take this uh, generator, and you can choose whether you want to plot it or not plot this generator for transient stability. This simply uh, controls uh, the ability to chart a generator in this plot selection page which used to be manual but makes it a whole lot easier by just simply selecting the component directly from the one line diagram uh, to plot and in fact we would like to go ahead and show the the speed of this generator so now i have a plot view that is available directly onto my single line diagram which makes it even more interesting to print this one line diagram along with the simulation result or the chart uh, actually shown and every time we run a, a transient stability study we can just simply uh, see the update directly on the chart uh, while the study is running and see the final result on my live view and and this way you can uh, quickly evaluate uh, different events or different conditions by simply changing the study case uh, or simply changing the the scenario uh, parameters uh, such as changing the fault uh, clearing times, durations, uh, things of that nature and see the impact of having a different condition 
uh, in, in your system. Uh, ETAP also allows you to have more than one chart available at a time. So you can simply uh, right click on any uh, component and plot not just one, but you can have more than one uh, chart for the same object, uh, or you can have multiple charts uh, stacked up for different objects onto your diagram and use those as an indication of how your system is doing throughout your uh, simulation process. These charts, of course, can be of any size. And whenever you're done with them, you can simply close them out. The chart visualization has also been added to harmonic analysis, where we can use plot view for result visualization of our harmonic studies. And we've also updated the IC rulebook with compatibility and planning limits and improved our modeling of static load impedance to be either a shunt or series impedance. We have also improved the grid code interface so that some of the capabilities such as scanning for uh, R and X uh, impedances can now be done directly through the, the study case. So let's just take a look at uh, the plot view visualization for harmonics in action. As usual with our example file, we can run our harmonic simulation, go to our plot selection page Select the, the buses that you would like to plot uh, and the plot type and click OK. And there, there you have the visualization of the waveforms. Our hairline again gives us the information for every single chart uh, uh, as we are reading them out. And you can again go back to the plot selection page, select multiple buses and now bring up waveform and spectrum. And you can see that the line charts as well as the bar charts both have been uh, changed uh, into nice colorful charts that you can customize and uh, uh, make them uh, work the way you want them uh, to work in terms of deliverables of your studies. You can also uh, use these charts for frequency scan. So as soon as the frequency scan is uh, completed, you can simply uh, open up the plot selection. Uh, once again, select the buses you would like uh, and plot the impedance magnitude of our frequency scan. And uh, this is where the crosshair uh, dropping comes uh, handy, where you can simply find the peak, uh, click, drop the value at that location, find the minimum, click again, and find any other point of interest. And of course, go ahead and print your chart out. We've also added the visualization to reliability analysis so that you can see the interruption cost and expected energy not supplied in the new bar chart types. And here you can see an example of uh, having different uh, color schemes or different color palettes uh, applied to uh, the plot views. And we've also updated the engineering library data for reliability studies, especially the gold book data. Let's talk about scripting and automation or ETAB Pi. Um, this flavor of Python scripting and automation is brand new in, in ETAB to a level that has not been included in the program before. The Python-based uh, scripting and API allows you to execute the script either locally or on a remote computer. So that means you can execute the Python script on the machine that you're working or in parallel over single or multiple computers, which allows you to farm off the workload onto either a single machine or on multiple platforms, especially if you're performing studies on multiple projects in parallel and they are time consuming uh, for various reasons such as transient stability or ground grid. It also includes a built-in Python IDE or integrated development environment for essentially running scripts. So you do not need to purchase uh, a separate Python editor or interpreter for running your Python scripts. The Python API also extends to um, running batch studies with events, and you can also use this Python API to create custom reports and graphical charts. So let's illustrate the Python uh, API and the ability to perform scripting through motor starting. What we've enhanced in motor starting is ability to perform automated motor start and result analysis purely based on Python, Python-based study execution, and Excel-based result uh, evaluation and customization. 
And of course, the plot view has also been added to motor starting for graphical plot results. You will notice the Python IDE available on the system toolbar. So we can simply go to our edit mode, launch our Python IDE, and what you will notice is the ETAP Python API automatically imports the ETAP package, connects us to the local client uh, and to the project file, make sure the connection is valid and we are ready to go. So this shortcut essentially saves uh, a number of clicks and time spent trying to initialize and make sure every script is uh, ready and connected uh, to, to go in the system. The next step obviously is to either type in our script or load up an existing one, in which case we can go ahead and open an existing script for running our uh, automated uh, motor starting study. So we'll simply find our script here, select it and open it. And that opens up inside the Python IDE. And all we have to do is essentially press run. And what the program right now is doing is essentially executing uh, various motor starts in the system. It's selectively going through, finding out all the motors in the system that can be started, starting them one by one independently, and producing the output or the impact start result of every single machine in the system. Once the analysis is complete, you can either bring up the, the plot view or you can just simply bring up the analyzer. The analyzer essentially executes another Python script, summarizes the information and produces into a nice, clean, consistent uh, Excel template uh, that you can actually print. This is actually an analyzer, which is also indicating that we've actually looked at every single motor that has the ability to start dynamically. Uh, it's evaluated the starting current based on the uh, results. It has looked at the pre-start voltage, starting voltages, post-start voltages, what is the dip during the motor acceleration period, what was the evaluation criteria, what is the acceleration time, and then it's giving us the worst case motor starting condition across all the different cases. So all these different output reports correspond to every single scenario that can possibly exist for each of these machines. So you can see the number of permutations and combinations you can execute just through a Python script. If you have 500 machines and 20 scenarios, the number of permutations can be mind boggling, but through program automation, you can ask the program to ev evaluate every single uh, scenario, which means uh, every single study case configuration revision uh, across all the different machines in the system and produce a worst case result in one shot. ETAP20 also includes EMTP and EMT CoSIM capabilities. This allows the ETAP horizon for transient simulation to essentially extend from the millisecond domain all the way into microsecond domain. With ETAP, you can essentially get the ability to perform electromagnetic transients or EMTP analysis, as well as perform co-simulation between ETAP and PSCAD EMTDC tools. Using EMT co-sim, you can accurately utilize EMT models that are already been provided or built in a PSCAD format and combine them with any ETAP network model and perform a hybrid simulation. This includes shunt-connected power electronic devices such as TATCOMs, SVCs, wind turbines, PV arrays, arc furnaces, and so on. You can include these types of devices with various actions such as false, protection right through, etc. for various grid code compliance and other switching transient type of studies. EMT COSIM allows us to define an automatic interface and an application boundary management for boundary data exchange, such that the information between the electromagnetic and phaser domains can be exchanged without any user intervention. Automatic network and component mapping is also available to transfer either a portion or the complete network from ETAB to PSCAD software. And finally, you can also use live plots in ETAP transient stability, as we've seen earlier, along with your EMT simulation. You can therefore simulate large networks with high fidelity in your region of interest. You can co-simulate 
at millisecond and microsecond time steps and therefore analyze the coupling between the phaser and electromagnetic transient domains. So let's see the EMTP and EMT COSIM applications in action. For a quick demonstration, we have essentially included a single object, which is a shunt-connected element, that is interfaced with the PSCAD software. This object essentially has a boundary represented with this uh, color ring, and it also is essentially represented here inside the PSCAD software. So therefore, this bus sub 2A acts as the network boundary between the ETAP software and the PSCAD uh, domains. Therefore, on the PSCAD domain, you can model any existing power electronic device or a complete network and perform any action on the PSCAD software. You can also perform similar actions or events on the ETAP software side and watch the interaction between these two simulations. In this simulation, as it has completed uh, executing, we can see that there is an initial uh, setup period for the initialization of the model followed by a fault on one of the buses inside the electrical system. We can see the impact on the phase voltages and we can also see the impact on the fault current. And we can see that this wind turbine generator uh, was uh, subjected to this fault, injected current in the system, once the fault was cleared, it was able to recover and it stayed connected inside the network. You can also see the live charts as they were updated on the ETAP simulation side. We can now change the fault location to a different point, such as the main bus, and observe what happens to this wind turbine generator when that fault is applied. In, in this particular scenario, we applied the fault onto the main bus. And as we applied the fault on the main bus, the wind turbine, which is closer to this main bus, saw a larger voltage dip uh, after this initialization period. And after this initialization period was completed, it essentially tripped. Therefore, we can see the voltage actually recovers. However, the current goes to zero. Therefore, we can see that for a fault that occurs in the system that brings the voltage down for a short period of time uh, does not allow this wind turbine to ride through. However, a fault in a different location with a lower impact, maybe for the same duration, uh, allows that wind turbine to essentially ride through. We can also see our visualization through uh, additional charts. And we can very clearly see here from our first case where the fault was applied on a a bus with uh, lower impact, we can see the wind turbine essentially uh, rides through the fault and essentially recovers uh, in the system. And for the second case, when the fault is essentially applied, we can see that the wind turbine goes through the same fluctuations, but since the fault magnitude was large and its location was closer to the turbine for a longer period of time, it was unable to stay connected and could not ride through and therefore it tripped. Therefore, in summary, with ETAP20, you can add the ability to perform electromagnetic studies such as switching transients, ferroresonance, insulation coordination, subsynchronous resonance, and or you can use the EMT COSIM module to combine the power of the ETAP network model and transient stability module with the detailed modeling of the power electronics that may be available in the PSCAD model giving you the flexibility and the power to essentially model and simulate any type of electromagnetic study together with any scale of a power system network model. ETAP also includes a new battery storage, charge discharge and battery management system. It also includes a new lithium ion battery type that has been added to the ETAP library that you can use in load flow based studies as well as time series based studies. 
These studies can be steady state or dynamic in nature. The BMS or the battery management system provides automatic control of charge and discharge during the steady state as well as dynamic studies uh, by looking at the bus voltage thresholds as well as the power generation in the system. ETAP20 also includes battery parameter estimation that allows manufacturers and users to accurately estimate the charge and discharge profiles based on the battery chemistry. You can plug in the variables based on the battery chemistry into the library and then automatically recalculate the battery characteristics, update those parameters directly to the library, and you can ap actually apply this to the lead acid as well as lithium ion battery types. The battery energy storage modeling and simulation is essentially available for DC load flow where we can model the state of charge uh, categories as well as uh, open circuit voltage uh, behind the resistance. It also includes the simulation of the lithium ion storage batteries. DC short circuit has also been enhanced to include contribution based on state of charge of the batteries. The unified load flow module includes uh, unified unbalanced AC and DC power flow simulation. So it includes the energy storage and battery management uh, system as well as the battery state of, state of charge categories and also the rectifier or charger regulation curve. The rectifier or the charger inside ETAP can be used for charging and discharging the battery through the uh, rectifier. You may also consider this to be a converter where we allow bi-directional power flow in the uh, electrical system. So therefore, for a unified power flow, you can easily simulate a case where you have uh, under voltage condition. So therefore, majority of the power is being uh, delivered by the AC network. Uh, in case of uh, serious under voltage condition, the, the battery can actually supply uh, supporting current and, and power into the network. And in case of uh, over voltage or higher voltage in the system, the battery can actually absorb power uh, away from the, the network. The, the details of the battery energy storage along with its ETAP simulation was already covered in a previous webinar on battery energy storage. So therefore we'll move on to our next topic which is essentially uh, UDM uh, based enhancements. The first one that we'll take a look at is the enhancement itself to UDM a module that includes the intermediate state graphs and the result comparison. The state graphs are essentially scope views that allow you to plot the input and output of any intermediate block inside your UDM model or you can plot the input and output of the UDM which is essentially the input and output to the transient stability program. So let's take a look at this particular capability uh, before we move on to our next topic. We can simply go back to our ETAP project file, uh, select our UDM model, and open up the UDM uh, editor for this particular uh, exciter in the system. Uh, we've already applied a scope view to various uh, blocks. The scope view can easily be applied by going to the output page and dragging and dropping the, the scope view somewhere in the system and applying it to any particular uh, output that you would like in the system. Uh, obviously, it's best practice to rename it so it would be good to rename the scope view to uh, some other alternative name. You can then simply compile this model inside ETAP and you're ready to visualize the uh, output of the scope view. In order to visualize the output of the scope view, we can just simply uh, close our UDM editor, uh, go to our uh, transient stability program, run our transient stability study, uh, and once the study is completed, we can open up our result comparison tool. In the result comparison tool, we can uh, select uh, our ETAP uh, project that we would like to visualize the results from, uh, load the information up, and pick any particular uh, output chart that you would like to uh, visualize, including this new one that we just added. You can simply uh, assign this uh, to a benchmark or a result or simply plot the selection. So here what we are actually seeing in our scope or plot are the intermediate states of our UDM. 
The plot view gives us the ability to see the result from any component, but the intermediate states in UDM allow us to see the output from any control block uh, in the system, making it very effective in debugging or understanding uh, any instability in the control system or lack of response in the control system. You can also select multiple uh, charts in order for doing comparison. You can simply select one of the uh, voltages or one of the results from the system, assign it to a benchmark, select another run from the system, assign it to a, a result, which is applied to a comparison chart one, and simply go to the uh, com uh, plot comparisons, select the comparison chart and plot this selection. And you can now see the benchmark uh, voltage against the transient stability output. What this allows you to do is set up a benchmark which could be based on actual measurements done from uh, the system while doing generator testing and comparing that with the transient stability results. When we perform DPET or dynamic parameter estimation and tuning, we are comparing the output of an exciter or governor or PSS along with the measurements. Here, we are comparing the output of transient stability along with measurements made at the terminal of the machine and not within the control system. So therefore, this tool can be used quite effectively in response evaluation, plot comparison, and obviously for network parameter tuning. You can perform uh, uh, unlimited plot overlays, you can perform unlimited uh, comparisons, uh, and then produce the results along with the benchmark file uh, for either the you can produce the results and benchmark file also for grid code compliance for operational systems. In summary, the network parameter tuning can be done through taking UDM intermediate block states, transient stability results, and fuel measurements that are compared together to produce benchmark versus, versus result comparisons. And this information can be essentially used to not only tune your network model, uh, but it can also be used to produce a deliverable for operational grid code compliance. ETAP20 also includes brand new dynamic models for solar, PV, wind, battery energy storage, as well as synchronous generators. WECC or Western Electric Coordinating Council based generic models, PVD1 for distributed and small PV plants have been included. Solar turbine based battery energy storage system dynamic models, as well as gas turbine and steam turbine based combined cycle power plants provided in SIGRI report 238 have also been added to ETAP 20. We've also added WECC phase two energy storage system models that include generic generator or converter models, generic electrical control models, as well as generic plant controller models. Wind turbine models for type 3 and type 4 are based on WCC second generation and have been added as part of ETAP20 release. That includes the drivetrain model, aerodynamic model, pitch controller model, as well as the torque uh, model for the wind turbines. We've also added a brand new cable sizing module in ETAP for fast and accurate cable sizing per French standard NFC13-200. You can perform complete current carrying capacity calculation for underground and above ground cable sizing, as well as it allows you to display correction factors that are applied per the cable uh, standard. In fact, on the batch cable sizing in ETAP20, you can see all the correction factors being applied to all the conductors in a single tabular fashion, allowing you to produce a compliance table uh, showing how the cable sizing was performed and what derating factors were applied, if any. E-Tracks has essentially been enhanced to include uh, wayside energy storage, a STATCOM and static VAR compensator uh, graphical simulation response in the plot manager as well as the chart views, and of course the plot view result visual visualization of the entire uh, traction power simulation as function of uh, time or the train timetable. So 
inside each ax, once you perform the simulation, you can simply move the time slider, see the location of the train, see the variation in the results. And if you have wayside energy storage, you can see through color contouring or other means, the impact that energy storage has on the traction substation as it's trying to uh, provide stability to the voltage as well as provide uh, energy boost in the case of the, the train accelerating from that particular section. So this capability to apply the uh, Wayside Energy Storage and uh, perform this analysis in eTrax is part of the eTrax uh, standard module. We've also enhanced NetPM or essentially Network Modeling and Project Management to allow for OLV or one line view as well as the GIS data synchronization that not only includes the data, but now also includes the annotations and the graphics as well. So that really speeds up the synchronization process between different engineers when they're located in, in different uh, sites or across different companies. In fact, you can use NetPM to not only uh, allow collaboration between different locations, but using the local queue, you can use NetPM to also manage your local data, which means once you make a change in ETAB, you can simply use a local queue to revert the data back to the original information, effectively acting as an undo function for the ETAB uh, model. With DataX, we've added new conversions as well as enhanced existing conversions that were provided as part of ETAB software. We can now perform automatic GIS and one-line diagram generation convert instrumentation and protection relays from SIEM databases. And you can also import legacy databases from SKM Power Tools 9.0. New conversion includes import from Millsoft windmill databases. That includes, again, automatic GIS and one-line diagram generation. And we also support incremental data transfer from these databases. ETAP app 4.0 has also been enhanced to include improved geotagging of information. You can now pin favorites onto your uh, ETAP app and bring your favorites on the top that you access most often. You can actually connect and disconnect elements onto the uh, using the one-line diagram. And you can uh, also do equipment searches uh, directly on the ETAP app. And of course, no release goes by without updating the verified and validated engineering libraries, and ETAP 20 is no exception. We have updated our cable libraries per cable regulation types. We have added a new library merge manager for protective devices. We've, we've added a new battery library type for lithium ion batteries, and added new protective devices, manufacturers and models for relays, circuit breakers and fuses, based on priority and industry demand. On the automation side, we've enhanced the microgrid controller to include a packaged hardware and software model-driven solution with a user-friendly controller design, ETAP in the loop situational intelligence, as well as the ability to do control system validation via steady state as well as dynamic and real-time analysis. Operator training simulator is enhanced to allow for operator actions through software in the loop or SIL simulation. Not only can you do steady state response such as breaker open and close actions, but you can also get a dynamic response back from this closed loop simulation along with the controller and relay operations. It's integrated with SCADA, PMS, EMS, DMS, and OMS applications as a standard operator or dispatcher training simulator. And it's not just a one-to-one -one OTS, but it allows for trainer to multiple trainee environment where the trainer can create ad hoc as well as execute predefined scenarios. The trainer can use these scenarios to then evaluate the trainee performance uh, across uh, an entire complex. The trainer can then use these ad hoc and predefined scenarios to evaluate the trainee performance on an individual basis. 
uh, AFAS or advanced fault analysis is also enhanced to allow accurate fault location and outage management integration. Fault information is retrieved from various formats such as Comtrade and that information is essentially uh, used to identify the fault type, phaser and frequency estimation, determination of fault impedance and location identification, and then finally visualizing the fault impedance and location visually on the one-line diagram as well as the geospatial diagram and making that available in terms of uh, outage management and crew dispatch. The power plant controller has also been enhanced to include active power, reactive power, and energy storage management logics. You can use ETAP in the loop simulation intelligence to test the performance of the power plant controller under various operating conditions and therefore effectively use it to design and operate the power plant controller for grid code compliance and then combine this information with renewable energy SCADA and dashboards. In fact, the power plant controller uh, provides the ability to monitor and control your main power plant. The ETAP SCADA HMI provides the visualization of the power plant in real-time basis. And you can also use a dynamic system monitoring recorder provided as part of this package to essentially perform the grid code compliance by monitoring the operational information of the system and comparing it with the study-oriented results and determining uh, whether the power plant is within compliance or not and therefore providing an effective audit of the renewable energy system. E-Protect has also been enhanced that allows complete relay and asset management, uh, increased data quality and access management through various access levels, uh, seamless data synchronization between the physical relay and ETAP star as well as automatic processing of the relay setting file. Therefore, through ePROTECT, we can extract the relay settings through the setting files or by direct communication to your favorite relays, bring it into the centralized ePROTECT database, synchronize that information with the uh, ETAP as found information. Based on this information, you can update your relay settings through various uh, analysis, send the optimized settings back to the central relay database, and essentially update the settings into the relay if you choose to do so. You can also bring in the fault waveform from these relays into the ePROTECT database and send it to the AFAS module for accurate fault analysis and fault location. You can also send this information over to the ePROTECT web clients that visualize all this orchestration of data and the data transfers that are occurring between the physical device and the design simulation tool into a nice web-based environment that is accessible from any location based on your security and cybersecurity practices. The ETAP application itself finally has been enhanced as well. So let's take a look at a few of these enhancements that are really small, but yet they provide a lot of value to the users on a regular basis. Study Wizard toolbar has been provided for quick access and batch study execution. We've added an autocomplete for quick search, an adjustable application background, as well as improved auto build for cables and instrumentation elements, and a full screen mode. The ETAP application background itself can be customized by changing the preferences and you can pick the favorite color of your choice and uh, style ETAP to your uh, needs. The search autocomplete can be accessed by using the shortcut or the find tool. And as you type in the data, the program automatically goes ahead and finds the best match for you. You can select the best match, press enter or okay and the program automatically finds that component for you on the one-line diagram. ETAP 20 also includes two new shortcuts, uh, one for full screen mode F11, as well as a best fit view. Pressing the home key allows you to best fit the, the diagram or the view within the ETAP application canvas. And you can then press F11 to essentially eliminate all the information around the ETAP application and really narrow down and zoom into the one-line diagram 
or the star view or the underground raceway view or the control system diagram view that you would like to focus on. You can use this in, in a presentation mode. You can use this to, to teach uh, your colleagues or other students and eliminate uh, all that additional information that may not be necessary uh, for the discussion at hand. We've also added a wizard toolbar and auto run for scenarios. You can simply open up the scenario wizard as usual and look at the list of scenarios from the scenario toolbar. The same list of scenarios is available in this uh, pull down menu that allows you to quickly pick one of them and ETAP automatically sets the study mode as well as the scenario conditions such as presentation, configuration, revision, study case, simply by selecting the uh, item in the scenario list. Once you are done with the scenario, you can also uh, activate the study wizard, see the list of uh, studies that you're performing, and you can see that there's one uh, study here that we can rename into all studies, and our uh, list for study wizards now is updated and shows us all our studies in, in that list. Uh, we can simply do the same thing with uh, the project wizard, uh, rename that one, and uh, essentially it will also update this, this view. Um, you can then set the toolbar to auto run mode, and every scenario that you pick, the program then automatically runs those scenarios for you, making it very convenient to pick and run the scenarios that you commonly run for your system. Uh, you can also go to the uh, study wizard, select a particular study that you want to pause. And when you select that particular macro, the, the program automatically executes all the studies that are part of that study macro up to the pause point. And you can of course do the same thing with the project wizard where we are running multiple macros that contain multiple scenarios across multiple ETAP projects. So therefore, this uh, study uh, toolbar is essentially a new feature or capability that we've essentially added inside ETAP. In the overall ETAP application, we've strived to make it more responsive throughout, including the studies as well as the graphical interface. We're continuing to improve high resolution display support for 4K and higher resolution monitors. Every user has a different environment and when we install ETAP, it may be possible that there might be certain restrictions that may cause the installation to fail. And therefore, we've also added, added an installation verification tool that will allow our users as well as IT engineers who typically install ETAP to verify that the program was installed uh, accurately and correctly, including all the program components. We've improved our library and project conversions and we've also updated the license manager features and the installation program itself. The system components that you will find enhanced in ETAP 20 include an upgraded Mongo database going up to 4.2, uh, updated Microsoft SQL Server Compact up to version 4.0, compatibility with Microsoft Server Operating System 2019, as well as an updated SAP Crystal Report version 13 update 26 uh, that brings us up to date with all the latest industry components that are available. So make sure you take a look at the system requirements for ETAP 20. In summary, ETAP 20 is a massive step forward in design and operation of power systems. It has been based solely on customer feedback, industry demands, and the future of power system design and management. We're really excited in offering you these groundbreaking features and capabilities. And we are looking forward for you to explore and learn more about other major feature and capabilities on our website at the published URL. ETAP 20 will be available for download from ETAP help desk as usual. And to purchase ETAP or reinstate your software maintenance agreement or UUC, please feel free to contact sales at etap.com or just go to our website and fill out our request pricing form. Thank you once again for attending this webinar, and we look forward to seeing you in future webinars on ETAP20 and other related products.